Welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on ThinkTech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studios at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Joining me in the studios is Mrs. Zenit Mien. Today we're going to talk about Ms. Mien's role as an advocate for the endangered Hawaiian monk seal. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday and earlier shows are streamed all, all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our live streams or previous broadcasts, which are available on YouTube.com, or if you want to subscribe or to our programs or get on our mailing list and get our program advisories, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at Think Tech Hawaii, Think Tech HI. Well, thank you, Ms. Zian, uh, Zini, I'll call you for the Hi. duration of the show. Thank you for coming in and talking with us and sharing with us uh, this role that you play as an advocate for the critically endangered Hawaiian monk seal. If you could, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the monk seal, and why do you uh, do what you do? I mean, it's hot, you're out there alone mm -hmm. by yourself, and in every nook and cranny, there, wherever the seals are, we can pretty much know where you are. Can you uh, introduce yourself to my, listen, my viewers and what have you? Mm -hmm. Hi, hello, Carol. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, my name is Zainat Mian, but yes, a lot of people just call me by my short name, Zini. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm from Spain, but I moved here six years ago, and one day I saw a little Hawaiian monk seal on a beach, and I just fell in love with them. And then when I found out how critically endangered they were, and how exciting and incredibly amazing they were, I just needed to know more. So I started, as you said, going to every nook and cranny, and trying to find out about them, their behaviors, what they do, mm -hmm. and try to... Uh, outreach people with the little uh, that I was learning, little by little. And uh, yeah, that's what I've done for the past six years. Well, over these years that I've known you, you have done great things and made great con contributions. Mm -hmm. And that is, for example, because this is a critically endangered species, and very few of them left, basically. I don't mm -hmm. know the exact number that NOAA, the National Marine Fisheries Services, or mm -hmm. NOAA uh, count today or represent there are. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that what is very interesting, in, and I want to say thank you, is that you're out there the eyes and ears on the front line, basically, mm -hmm. when there are monk seals that have been hooked or shot or injured. Can you tell us about that? And you've contributed to some major recoveries and, and mm -hmm. very serious injuries to the monk seals where you alert the public as well as the media. Share with us some of those yes. instances. So, yeah, these animals face quite a few issues for their recovery. One of them is hooks. They get hooked, you know, they see something nice dangling and they bite it and then they get hooked. Or they get tangled in um, marine debris. And uh, I've seen a few of them. So I found in December 2014, Benny, mm -hmm. who was, uh, he's quite famous guy. And uh, he had swallowed uh, a hook and he had to be taken and perform surgery to save his life. So basically, yeah, I'm very grateful that I found him and I could save his life. Mm -hmm. I found all the seals with Bikulua hooks on their mouths. Another one with another seal, two young females that had hooks as well. And you could see the line coming out to the side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, alerting, you know, informing the media and the public and mm -hmm. then making sure that they were getting you know, they require treatment. And the, and the reason you do that is, one, uh, they are endangered, mm -hmm. and so their well-being is of your con your concerns primarily. Yes. And, and secondly, you appreciate them. We know that it, as mm -hmm. well as I do and many other people, but well, you take it one step further because it's, it's sometimes you're out there alone in the early mornings. Mm -hmm. You're driving away from home on wherever you live, going to Turtle Bay, uh, Kaina Point, mm -hmm. Haula, Miley, and those areas where basically you're out there on your own and, and tirelessly. The benefit is having you there seeing this. Mm -hmm. Any one of these monk seals entangled with these large lines can 
get entangled in the rocks that, with the leader that's leading yes. and actually drown or cut them, make a greater injury. So yes. Yes, they do, yes. Yeah. So sometimes it's very critical to find them quickly, like Benny. Mm -hmm. He was very lucky that we saw him when we saw him. Mm -hmm. Because um, the fact that we saw him so quickly and we could alert the right people to give him treatment, mm -hmm. the following day there was a hu huge surge patrol and they caught him and took him into, uh, to have surgery. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, sometimes if they swallowed a hook, it's, you know, every second counts. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that there are eyes and ears out there. Now, I, I hear you say Benny. You name one of them Benny. And yes. some of the people, the naysayers, are, uh, might get a chuckle out of this. How do you, is that the official name? or And, and there are other names or other mm -hmm. ways that they identify these animals. Can you share with us how yes. the government, uh, the scientists, uh, distinguish the, the difference between each animal and what have you? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I give them a name. Um, I feel them closer. Benny is RE74, actually. So the scientists, they tag them. So they put tags on their hind flippers, mm -hmm. two tags with two numbers that each animal has its own number. And what do these tags look like? They're on the main Hawaiian Islands, they're red. And uh, it will be usually a letter and two numbers, but mm -hmm. it varies. Sometimes it's two letters and one number. And then sometimes they also get bleach. So they use some like hair bleach and mm -hmm. they just bleach on their fur a number. A and number uh, like what? what like, for example, um, N20 or N19 or mm -hmm. N4. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, this monk seal in human terms uh -huh. has three uh, personalities <laughs> there's Benny, <laughs> and then there's N19 yeah. that's been etched by the government, and then there's a tag that biologists have put yeah. in. So, you got it might be a little confusing for the monk seal. Uh, for monk seal, <laughs> no, I think I think the monk seal survived <laughs> just fine. <laughs> but, but these names, uh, they are interchangeable to some people, but other mm -hmm. people just go by the, the number that's etched on them. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So I mean, the public, they all have different names. I mean, there are groups of surfers who usually see a particular seal and they name it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have their own names. And because they're wild animals, that's okay. I mean, we're not going to shout them out and they're going to respond to us. Now, uh, uh, how does one arrive at naming a monk seal Benny? Is it because he's funny or yeah. is Jack Benny or <laughs> what, what, why? Actually, I didn't name Benny. Mm -hmm. Benny already had his name and okay. he, has, he has quite the personality. Okay. Um, I've named other seals. I usually just look at their personality and I look for a Hawaiian matching name. Mm -hmm. um, some other times, yeah, it's whatever just arrives to me. And that, that naming is consistent, it, not just you. I, I know that mm -hmm. many people that go out and advocate for the seal will refer to them as Benny and some of the other names, Kaivi and yeah. Honey Girl. Or uh, What are some of the other names? And, and could you talk about them migrating from Kauai and other islands? And mm -hmm. what do you see the frequency of them coming here? So um, I, I just, you know, I, I put their own number, their, their own names. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I, when I get to know them, I just look for a name that would suit their personality, a Hawaiian name. Mm -hmm. So for example, there is a little girl we're seeing on screen, a green little girl, I call her Akamai. I just saw her one day and I thought, you have to be Akamai. She was just too cute. Mm -hmm. um, seals also travel a lot. They are amazing travelers and they move between the islands. So sometimes they move from Kauai to Oahu, Molokai to Oahu, Oahu Molokai. They follow each other. Um, I guess they're just curious. They're very curious animals. And since they follow fish, you know, to mm -hmm. eat, um, I guess that as well triggers their movement. And, and speaking following fish, what are some of the things they eat? They love eel, um, octopus, um, fish. Uh, they would eat almost anything, mm -hmm. um, lobster, there are some videos where you can see them kind of with their muscle moving the rocks under the water. I have a beautiful picture of a seal eating an eel and she throws it up in the air and then she swallows it. I think we have one of those yes. in, that depicted yes. where there's a red eel. Uh, eel. Yeah, that's actually a little girl called uh, Kamea and that eel was longer than her but mm -hmm. she ate it all. So that was pretty amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. So with the, the naming and what have you, there's a darker side to this or a sad mm -hmm. side to this also. 
they do get injured. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other dangers that uh, these animals are threatened, the monk seal is threatened with? Uh, nets, for example. What, yes. what other? Can you speak to the, the nets and have you witnessed mm -hmm. any situation where something like that has happened? I have not witnessed them getting um, tangled in nets. I've mm -hmm. seen it on the news, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But yeah, nets, they, they are marine mammals. They need to come up for oxygen to breathe and operate just like us. So if mm -hmm. they get tangled and they cannot reach the surface, they would just suffocate and die. So to avoid that, either mm -hmm. avoid using nets or uh, do not leave the nets unattended yes. or leave them sitting in the water overnight because they're, they do pose a threat and a danger to monk seals yes. and other marine ma animals, correct? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Now you've, you've actually, if I recall right, you've been out there and witnessed a monk seal giving birth. Uh, yes, I and, have. And can you, that must be exciting to see that because it's an endangered species. Yes. And yet you're seeing one more. Uh, yeah. Oh, very hunt. exciting, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when you've been following the mom, the whole process, when you see the mom first with some boyfriends, mm -hmm. and then you see her grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And then one day, you know, you see the whole thing happening and a little black flipper going to the side. It's just too exciting. Mm -hmm. And you have some, shared some of these pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, with us. H how does one get to know about you and where you are and you also contribute uh, these animals locations and whatever to biologists and the public and DLNR and other people, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but doing these visits now, this is an, a kind of a sidebar, you being out there, you're going to be seeing some things that uh, that most of us wouldn't see, and thankfully you're there. For example, mm -hmm. there was an incident involving albatross, the killing of albatross at Kaina Point. Yes. Did you have any kind of role, directly or indirectly, uh, putting that together and alerting the authorities on that matter? Yes. Um, unfortunately, it was a day that I was hiking with a friend, a couple mm -hmm. of friends, and yeah, we, we were following those albatrosses, a couple we'd seen for two years. So when we got there that morning and we saw the nest all ruffled up and the egg broken and we knew something had happened so we alerted the authorities. Mm -hmm. And that's a yeah. current case in the news now mm -hmm. where someone has pled guilty and what have you and that's still ongoing. Uh -huh. So yes. I really appreciate what you're doing and uh, I hope many other people will get out there and embrace you. So this, this effort is much needed. Again, it's mm -hmm. a critically endangered marine mammal and one of our, the Hawaii monk seal. Yes, absolutely. The more people who are out there, just be nice and ears, the better for the animal and protecting them, making sure they can haul out so they can sleep and that they don't block access to the ocean because they may need to return back to the ocean. Mm -hmm. If they're on the sand or on the rocks, let them sleep, let them rest. You know, they need that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll be taking up some more uh, of this conversation shortly. Uh, we're taking a short break. Mm -hmm. I'm Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii, Think Tech Live streaming network series. We're talking with Ms. Zina Mian about the endangered Hawaii monk seal. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of this story. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is John Waihe'e, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. We're back, we're live. I'm Carol Cox and this is Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Live streaming network series talking about endangered Hawaiian monk seal. And 
Thank you, Zini. Mm -hmm. We'll call you Zini, yes. man. And uh, I, I don't know, because I go out there, I don't think people can really appreciate it because just the height to kind of point, and uh -huh. you're walking in, and not only are you walking in a couple of miles, you're there in the sun all day, or you're in the rain, or the wind, mm -hmm. and you're carrying a bundle of cameras and all. <laughs> what drives you? I mean, is this something, a love of the animal? Is it the, the fact that the, it's an endangered species? Or are you, or all of that combined, and you're just concerned and you want to be the, take to the paternalistic uh, mm -hmm. role? You want to, are you yeah. the anti of the monk seal? <laughs> You know, it's a bit of everything. So the animal is so, the Hawaiian monk seal is so uh, amazing that it just hooked me. Mm -hmm. So there's always that drive of, let's see what they're doing today. And, you know, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. But also the worry of, let me make sure I go out there and that they're safe and that they're not injured or hooked or anything. So it's a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about uh, the monk seal. There's, there's this great debate and, and misinformation, as I know it to be, and mm -hmm. historically it's been a problem. Well, we want people to respect the animal. We don't want them to disturb them. We don't want them to harass. We don't want them to modify their habitat. Or if they're resting, let them be, so, because they are critically endangered. Mm -hmm. And even if they weren't, they are a wild animal. But there's some information that sometimes is misunderstood or miscommunicated. What about this, there's supposedly a law Mm -hmm. that says you can only go within a certain number of feet. Yeah. Is that true? Unfortunately, there is no law that limits a human from being at any given distance. There are guidelines, though. And who sets those guidelines? Yes. So the guidelines were set out by the government, and they can be viewed on their website. It, you know, it's, if you type it in on Google, you can read it. Which and government agency? Uh, NOAA? NOAA, okay. yes. So on NOAA's website, you can mm -hmm. read a full set of guidelines and advising you how to view the animal. And they're very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. and, and so w there are some, say, 50 feet. Yeah. But sometimes in a certain cove, the, f the surfers have to walk past that to get to the water to go surfing. Yeah. And, and many occasions, they don't uh, interfere with the animal. But sometimes if there's a mother and her calf or cub or whatever, yeah, pup, it, yeah. pup, that might be construed as a disturbance. Mm -hmm. So if you see that your, your actions or your presence is creating a problem or disturbance, what should people do? I think you should always be wary. So a mom and a pup, oh, don't get close to them at all because the mom will chase you and bite you. And, mm -hmm. I, and I've, I have a lot of footage of a mom chasing a surfer on the, on the rocks. Mm -hmm. um, the sleeping seals, if you're in a tiny cove, you know, just give them as much as a wider berth. Mm -hmm. Again, never block their access to the ocean. So try and walk behind them instead of between the seal and the ocean. Walk behind them and don't make any noises. You know, just be quiet and just go mind your own business. And, and with these animals as they're laying there, they're very solitude, mm -hmm. solitary at least. And sometimes, as you showed me about two weeks ago, there were six in one <laughs> yes. cove. Now, I had not witnessed that in my entire history of living here in Hawaii, yeah. uh, even on the outer islands in the, the uh, northwest Hawaiian islands. I've never seen that yes. number uh, congregate together. And they weren't fighting or, or wrestling or struggling or struggling with one another. Uh, there were juveniles and there mm -hmm. were a young, young pup less than a year old yes. amongst them. Is that a common sight? Unfortunately, it's not a common sight because, you know, we only have here about, on the island of Oahu, about 25 seals. So unfortunately, it's not common. Mm -hmm. But my experience, in my experience, I've witnessed that young males do look for each other. So they look for each other and they play. Mm -hmm. So that group of seals were kind of looking for each other. And when they find each other, they like to lay down next to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they do not tolerate each other too good, and they'll bark. Yeah, and, and yeah. you have some, <laughs> as we witness when they off yes. of a uh, sandy beach area, in that Makapu, yes. uh, there was a fight there. Uh, exactly. Uh, very violent. And, yes. and, and I, I'd seen some skirmishes, but not one like that. And they yes. were at it. And I don't know 
was there a female in estrus yeah. or in heat or that they were jousting over or was it just territory you know them better yes, than i do that was buster that he's very common to sandys and an old guy very old guy and buster was being territorial so i think he was just scouting the coastline and trying to keep it for him mm -hmm. and when he saw that other male he was not happy so and they're persistent too they don't give oh, you gosh you think well, okay, they, in human terms, mm -hmm. okay, if a person walks away from the fight, the, generally, the general understanding is the fight's over. Yeah. Not a monk's monk seal. It's not no. over until you clear the area. You, you have to leave, no matter what the water is, how rough it is, if there's 10 sharks out there. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> they're very uh, interesting yes. animals. And, yes. And, and they're very competitive. But I guess when you look at that, that's why they're still clinging on because they need to be competitive in this mm -hmm. day and age of the competition uh, with people fishing and spear fishing and yes. what have you and people are killing them but one thing i don't want to miss out on is if you could speak to mm -hmm. there's another thing that poses a greater risk to the monk seal mm -hmm. and that is people and their dogs can you yes. speak to that? And, and I mean, even if you would like to scold them, no. <laughs> no, but, I wouldn't uh, do that. We're a little nice, nice yes. today. But, but, but again, can you speak to that? Because I, many occasions, I see pit bulls, little mm -hmm. chihuahuas, and they just let their dogs run up to the monk seal, and they can bite the monk seal. So speak yes. to it if you would. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody should try to keep their dogs on the leash. I mean, I understand you go to a beach, you want to have your dog free and everything, but... The seals are there and sometimes they just look like a rock and you don't see them. Mm -hmm. So if your dog is loose, one's going to smell the other. The dog is an animal too and that's going to trigger its senses. It's going to run towards the seal. The seal is going to defend itself. And recently there was a, an instance with that in Makuleia between a dog, a seal and her pup. Mm -hmm. And this seal just went after the dog, obviously. And uh, the dog could have injured the pup and killed it. Thank God nothing happened, but that was just luck. And dogs do bite seals. They do. And, they do. and have any of those seals died from the bite or infections mm -hmm. or what have you? I believe there have been, there was a death in Kauai, on the island of Kauai, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, they can transmit to each other diseases. Mm -hmm. The seal can transmit the dog and the dog to the seal. So mm -hmm. it's a two-way um, that can happen. Well, one of the things that we must do, all of us, mm -hmm. is adopt a stance that these animals belong here. They were here when we arrived mm -hmm. here, and they're part of our makeup, our heritage, the Hawaiian monk seal. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know the exact number because I, the numbers change different depending on the source. That, mm -hmm. do, But we do know that they brought some here to the main Hawaiian islands. And how are they doing on the big island? The seals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not very aware of the population of the big island. Um, I understand that's the island with the least number of seals, but then I'm not very aware of those. Mm -hmm. Now, always uh -huh. someone wishes to feed the animal. You, you <laughs> can't, we cannot let this escape us. Yes. Should, should anybody be throwing fish or any kind of food to monk seals? No, they should not. I why, mean, why not? I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. it's helping the little critter along. Why should they not? Well, you don't help it because the critter has to be wild. And wild means the critter has to go out there and get its own food. Mm -hmm. So as, uh, when you start feeding these seals, then they get used to that and they'll become lazy. They're like, no, no, I'll wait for somebody to feed me. And they lose that sense of wildness. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to go out there and hunt their own food. So please do not feed them. And, and uh, monk seals haul out, we'll call it, mm -hmm. the term hauling out. And they may be at this hour upon this beach, but th that's dictated by the current and the waves as the mm -hmm. tide increases or decreases. So if you see a monk seal at the edge of the water, don't go and camp out right <laughs> 10 feet ahead of him up slope because the, he may have just come ashore yes. or she may have come, just come ashore. And, and eyeing the upper area because the tide is rising yes. and the waves are, so they want to be removed out of the water. And so what will happen? They'll come 
as you plop down with your picnic blanket and your family there. So people should exercise caution and not establish a campsite or a picnic area. Yes, yes, I agree. I think when you see a seal, you should give you should give the seal about 50 feet because you don't know exactly, as you said, if it's going to go further up, if it's going to get hot and go down, if it's going to roll over. You know, seal has its own agenda. So, so what, what we'll do is suggest to the viewers out there and the listeners mm -hmm. is that if you see something going wrong with the monk seal, call the National Marine Fishery Service, mm -hmm. report that to them. Or if you can't get a response there, sometimes they're overwhelmed or not available, mm -hmm. or call the Department of Land and Natural Resources, yes. or call the police department. Believe it or not, the police department is one of our better natural resource protectors. Mm -hmm. They're there, and they care. I, I, they do. I've never had a police officer, a mm -hmm. Honolulu police officer, or a sheriff to say no. They are there, so don't hesitate mm -hmm. to call. Do you agree? I completely, completely. I've been very successful yeah, with police officers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the couple things, and mm -hmm. if you see them, respect them. They can bite, but we're not worried about so much that they can bite. It's mm -hmm. what we do to disturb them and yes. cause the, to alter their behavior, expose them to a greater risk or what have you. And they're resting during the daytime, basically, and yes. feeding at night. Yes. So every minute of sleep that they lose could be detrimental or taxing their well-being. Yes, absolutely. So when a seal, you see a seal coming ashore, just let it come out and rest. Um, because um, they've, they've been hunting all night, so they're very tired. And if they don't get the rest and they have to return to the ocean, they, you know, they can fall prey to a predator much easier than if they're fully rested. Thank you, Zini. Thank you, Zini Carol. Mian. I appreciate you and uh, yes. helping and watching out for the seals, and we'll have you back again. Thank you very much. Thank and you. And please, whatever you do when it comes to monk seals or any of the wildlife, respect them and give them their place in their space. Okay, we're out of time, and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Live, streaming live network series. We've been talking with Mrs. Zian Mian, Mian, Mian about the endangered Hawaii monk seal. Thanks to you, Mrs. Zian, uh, and uh, thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. And thanks to you, our viewers and listeners. If you want to get your, our email and your social media program advisories, Click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest, underwriter, or volunteer, or if you want to join us in our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts on ustreamtv.com, youtube.com, just go to thinktechhawaii.com. Go there and Go there and, and to our Facebook page to tell them you like us. We'd love you to like us. And of course, I'll see you next Tuesday at 12 noon. For more on Eyes of Hawaii on ThinkTech, I'm Carol Cox. Aloha, everyone.